yeah in the previous lecture we started with the peer to peer type of computing or networking previously we were having two different configurations supported by windows operating system the two operating systems that were supported specifically for peer to peer network where first intelligent networking was started that means the terminals that were available were intelligent one and were able to share the resources available with them the see in the diagram one particular uh, terminal is having operating system windows 95 and a windows nt workstation is utilized in windows nt workstation provides us the connectivity at various levels this particular terminal windows nt workstation and this terminal having operating system windows 95 windows 95 was the first operating system for microsoft which supported the networking function and which provided us the concept associated with peer to peer networking in this particular configuration all computers provide and request services that means whatever information that is available on the terminal or the workstation can be provided at the same time the information can be requested the advantage associated with this particular system there was no control or a centralized control is not at all available for this this type of system obvious disadvantage is since there is no control security is quite weak typically the configuration peer to peer configuration was initially utilized to share the resources under one roof say for a local area network so the number of computers after uh, after the invention of the modems it was enlarged to more than 10 computers but initially this peer to peer network configuration was started for a local area network or the computers less than 10 numbers so less than 10 numbers can be connected in windows for work groups and share the request as well as share the resources this was the initial concept for the data networking peer to peer network where the terminal is intelligent one it has its own operating system it has in own resources see the terminal printer is being shared by all the systems in the network it was a peer to peer the printer was also connected to the network printer was not at all connected to one of the station but printer was also connected and there it was the development of the network printer the network printer there is printer with a suitable network interfacing card and the information from any other terminal or any data terminal connected in the network can be printed on the shared resource shared resource here hardware resource that is the printer a single printer shared among all the terminals this was the concept associated with peer to peer network configuration this the advantages are it's a low cost type of network it's low cost the software additional software additional hardware is not at all required the software meaning the centralized control software or a secured software or the software with all the resources is not at all required for this peer to peer type of networking and since the terminals are the intelligent terminals additional hardware is also not at all required the biggest advantage was it's easy to implement peer to peer network configuration just if two terminals are there connect the two terminals previously the windows terminal or the desktop computers were provided with the com port communication port just connect the two communication port of the two computers and the information can be shared nowadays com port is not at all available instead of that we have usb ports but previously for windows 95 version or the desktop versions we were supported with two communication ports and one printer port and the two computers can be 
connected in peer to peer configuration just by connecting the two communication port the two communication port one communication port was typically in the transmitter mode second terminal in a receiving mode and the two computers connected with a communication port can easily communicate with each other and since the two terminals are the master the separate network administrator is not at all required that is the biggest the cost of providing a system administrator or the person who knows everything needs to be first of all trained and that training cost is quite high for the networking professionals and that also reduces the cost associated with peer to peer type of networking the obvious drawback just now i have told you it's a low level of security since no centralized control is there there was no security at all that means one particular terminal if it has some virus then that virus can be easily shared or transmitted to other terminal in the network and other terminal if requesting some files does not have a control that the virus will be detected if of course if that terminal has its own built in antivirus then that virus can be detected but additional software is required and that's why it's a low level of security for peer to peer type of network and sometimes one printer is to be shared by multiple terminals then there will be a heavy load because of a single resource sharing by all multiple terminals and that is the biggest drawback associated with peer to peer type of networking the disadvantage again is the resource sharing is controlled by the user that is if terminal a terminal a has a file which terminal a wants to share with only terminal b and not with terminal c and d that is possible because the user will share the file only with the specified terminal so that file is not at all shared with the public network or public which is connected to the data network and that has again since the resource sharing heavy load has restricted the number of terminals in the peer to peer type of configuration to 10 computers the advent of client server networks the client server network consists of the client as well as the server computers the server computers the specialized computers or the optimized computers which actually provides the service and all the clients are requesting from the service in the peer to peer type of configuration we can say that every terminal is a client every terminal is a server because they are requesting the information as well as providing the information so in peer case of peer to peer every terminal is server as well as every terminal is a client but in specific client to server networks we are provided with separate server computers the server computers are optimized to provide the service similarly the client computers are optimized to request service the server computers provide the security and administration this is quite important everything associated with the administration of a data network is controlled by the server computer server defines what is to be accessed by the client computer and that is one of the biggest advantage associated with the client server type of configuration but whenever we are considering that the server provides optimized service to every client then this is going to cost or higher configuration associated with the hardware the requirement associated with the hardware that means if uh, the server computer is provided with say 1 gb ram and if 100 terminals want to access a single file which is available on the server then this particular 1 gb ram will not at all be sufficient or the server will be very very slow in catering the request of the 100 clients connected in the network and that's why the server must have a high configuration 
a high configuration associated with the hardware. May it be related with the networking, may it be related with the networking primitives and services that are offered by the server, or may it be related to the bandwidth that is supported by the server, or may it be related to the scratch pad memory which is utilized for processing the requests that are obtained from the various client computers. And that's why the server must have a specific high configuration. That's why normally the internet servers are usually either the mainframe servers or even if we have a typical desktop configuration, we must have at least 32 or 64 or 128 GB RAM so that that server will be able to cater number of clients if the normally the figure is if the server has a 1 GB RAM then the resources can be shared by 10 computers and add the multiples of this per day, RAM so if the RAM is around 32 then 320 terminals can be catered not efficiently but optimally by the server. That's why the server requires a high configuration. That is the drawback associated with this configuration. But again, the advantage is strong central security. All the terminals are properly connected to the server and server provides the security associated with the data flow from the client to the server. The clients in this configuration need not be the intelligent clients. The clients can be simply dumb terminals or semi dumb terminals or semi intelligent terminals. Since the resources are entirely controlled by the administrators, efficient resource sharing among all the clients is possible and administrator plays an important role while defining the criteria for the resource sharing, defining the priorities, defining the interrupts, defining the associated memory management, defining the resource management. And that is the biggest advantage is easy management of large number of users. You can have hundreds or two hundreds or even thousand terminals connected in a client server network under local area network or you can have a client server configuration where the server can be situated at a far distant and you are accessing with the support of the public data network from the client computer one of the not exactly the correct example but it's the cloud computing cloud computing everything is available on the cloud and you are sharing the resources with the support of web browser or the internet type of connectivity. The cloud is not at all entirely a client server networks, but we can configure cloud computing as a client server network. The obvious disadvantage cost of the server hardware is quite high. You can see the cost associated with simple desktop servers, the desktop servers supported by Dell having a specific configuration of say 32 GB RAM will cost almost around 1.5 lakhs to 2.5 lakhs depending upon of course the configuration that is required for optimally provide the services associated with the hardware and services associated with the software sharing and the manpower that is required for managing the client server must be a dedicated manpower, must know everything associated with the network, must know how the hardware and software associated with the servers can be managed. And that's why it's said that a well-trained network administrator is boss in the client server networking. The client server configuration Whenever we talk about it, the server offers a variety of network services to the clients. 
the various types of services the server may be a file server server may be a print server server may be a message server the typical example is the public domain email system the server may be a database server and the services all offered are the common network services offered by the servers which provides the connectivity as well as which utilizes the network operating system to offer multiple clients multiple services that is one particular client will go for the file services another client will go for the print services offered by the server the third client may access the database with the support of the sql queries in the client software format but a single server can offer all these services with the support of network operating system and that's why the windows in the windows environment windows client operating system is typically called as a desktop operating system and the server operating system it's the windows server operating system typically 2016 the present 2016 or the azure windows server or the windows azure 2020 configuration which supports the cloud computing also that these are the typical examples so in the open source domain we have different configurations associated with the linux there are unix servers there are linux servers the costing associated with the linux server is very very low compared to the costing associated with the microsoft servers or the unix servers because the original cost associated with the microsoft network operating system and the client connectivity to this network operating system the cost is quite high and that's why whenever we are utilizing the web applications and we are hosting it on the microsoft platform the costing associated is quite high compared to the costing that is supported for the linux server and client just remember the different types of services file services print services message services application services and database services in case of file services the primitives or the services that are offered or the functions that are offered to the clients is the transfer of the file the centralized server stores all the files the data information associated with the files can be offered to the clients and based on that data information the clients can request for the specified file it's one of the initial networking service that was developed whenever the data networks were developed and nowadays it's translated to the ftp server file transfer protocol servers ftp there are specific ftp protocols that are being used to download the files that are supported by the ftp servers wherever you are all intelligent terminals will be the client and the resources are available on the centralized server the file services includes the updation of the files if the text information in the document file is updated immediately that updated information is available with the support of update synchronizations at the file server and keeping the record of the previous files that are used which is also known as a file archiving file archiving is again important file services all these services are offered by the ftp servers ftp servers that we utilize nowadays and that's why in the client server configuration the important services that are offered in the cs it's typically known as a cs environment client server environment in this client server environment file services are offered by the file server along with the files the resources hardware resources also can be shared it's not a simple printer it can be a scanner that is being connected it can be a network type of plotter which is available in the system and those hardware devices with the support of 
network operating system can be accessed from any terminal in the data network. That is the advantage. Nowadays, that's why the network, a single network printer, a heavy duty network printer can be shared by almost 100 terminals which are utilizing the print services that are the specified print jobs as per the client's requirement, a single printer will provide the print services with the CS environment. The typical functions again, provide multiple access from limited interfaces, eliminate distant constraints, eliminate distant constraints at present from my handset, a mobile handset with the Android operating system, I can access the printer that is being connected to my terminal, which is in my cabin, connected to a desktop computer, which has a Microsoft operating system, which eliminates the distant constraints. That is from anywhere, any location in the world with the support of the print services, with the support of the nowadays cloud, cloud print services, I can access the printer that is kept in my cabin from anywhere in the world, which totally minimizes the distant constraints. Then important configuration in the CS environment, message service. Message service, this particular configuration is entirely based on the store and forward configuration utilized by the previous postal services. You might have heard the telegram services. The telegram services, the message from one person or one subscriber was transferred over long distances and that text information was conveyed as a specified telegram message to the distant subscriber. This services includes storing of the message, accessing of the message and delivering of the message. The, info may, the message may be nowadays audio, the message now may be a video, the message may be a hybrid type of message which consists of the data information as well as the audio video information. But initially whenever the configurations associated with the client server network was developed, it was the facility that was supported by the message services. This performs the important functions associated such as pass computer generated nodes and data between users. The basic concept of email before the advent of the public domain email system, a message was generated either at the server end or if the client needs to communicate the message to the server and all other terminals that are connected, the messaging services were offered in the server environment. The server processes those messages and delivers the messages to the specified recipients and not all. And that's the basic associated with the electronic mail. So the client server configuration at present, we can say that the present email configuration is the message services that are offered in the client server environment. So you have the public domain client or for accessing your email. If you have tried Outlook Express, Outlook Express that's a desktop application or a desktop client which can even access your Google Mail. Google Mail, if a proper configuration is provided, Outlook Express as a mail client can access the information that's available on your Google Mail server. The Google Mail server will, the information will be retrieved at the Outlook client with proper authentication. That is your necessary authentication whenever you are providing for the, for accessing your email account in the Gmail domain, specifically in the Gmail domain. That's the Outlook client, a mail client or a message service which is being utilized by the user. The advantage associated with this Outlook type of configuration is it's 
the creation of offline messages so if you want to send number of messages and creating all those number of messages without connecting to the internet you can create those messages and in a bulk way you can send at once if multiple messages are created in the gmail client which is now a outlook express which is a desktop application that is being utilized on the windows operating system specifically this outlook is the email clients for the desktop environment which is not at all supporting the linux environment but for the windows desktop terminal you can utilize the outlook express as a gmail client which can access the information the mail information the email information on the server terminals and of course the important database services which provides server based data storage and retrieval for clients who request data from this specialized server everything nowadays utilizes the dynamic configuration associated with the web applications that we are utilizing nowadays where database plays an important role the database the third generation database the fourth generation database server configurations you might have heard the database servers specifically the oracle servers the windows microsoft database servers or the simply open source sql client servers or my sql servers or ms sql servers that is the typical proprietary name for the database servers utilized by the microsoft platform those are the various but the important functions are keeping the database records and control where data is stored geographically that is a hierarchical way to store the data at the same time it a specified security needs to be provided for the database transactions so that all the terminals will all the terminals in the client server configuration will utilize or will provide the function such as optimizing computers for storing search and retrieve the important functions that are required for the database whenever a database needs to be accessed what information is available in the database is first of all searched then the specific information is retrieved if the information needs to be updated then information with suitable authorization will be updated and that information will be stored on the database servers all these functions are part of the database services in the client server configuration note we are talking about the client server configuration so the network services offered by the various servers file services print services message services application services database services nowadays we have two tier architecture three tier architecture or multi tier architecture associated with the client server configuration that means a client can directly access the services from the file server or in between if we are providing additional security layer then with the support of this security one additional tier is added in between the client and server and that's how the tier architectures are defined in the client server type of configuration so just remember important configurations file services print services message services application services and database services the networks whatever may be the format associated with the networks whether that network configuration is a lan configuration whether it's a man type of configuration or it's a wide area network the with the support of various communication tools the computers share the information and also shares the abilities the abilities that are associated the message services application services database services print services file services everything supported by the client server 
configuration. The client server configuration plays an important role and that's why I'm considering this client server configuration before the configuration that is being supported or before going to the development associated with the protocols, what are the protocols. That's why I'm talking about the client server computing model. Why it is required? This is nowadays required to share the information. The information access needs to be increased with the desired with the desired information from the clients. That is, as per the client's requirement, the information needs to be properly decimated. One particular server can be a client for the database services. The same server can be a client who can provide the printing, queuing information associated with the sharing of the hardware resources. The same server can be utilized to provide the database services, which provides the improved system effectiveness, which is very, very important. Improved system effectiveness so that with the support of the simplest user interfaces, both the PCs, the desktop PCs, the clients and the servers provides their strengths in leveraging the information and enhance the power, enhance the power of the entire data network. And that's very, very important whenever we are talking about the client server or the data network services. Why we need, why we need the networking, the, and now here, our actual design associated with the computer networks or the computer communication system starts. The endpoints for all these devices are our data terminals. Previously, I have told you the data terminal, the data terminal which is capable of utilizing the network facilities, network services is known as a workstation. Even our cell phone is now a workstation which can effectively communicate with other devices, other devices or can be a part of a client server computing. So endpoints may be the desktop computers, laptop computers or even the cell phones. The design associated with the communication as well as the network applications for the endpoints. If I'm having a cell phone, I must have a specified app which will act as a client for accessing the information of the server. You might have seen various applications, various apps on your Android device. Android device, a Gmail client. You have a Gmail, Gmail app on your Android device. You can access your email from your cell phone. WhatsApp, you are accessing WhatsApp, which provides audio communication, video communication, chat, or the textual communication, or a hybrid type of communication. So the WhatsApp client on your terminal gets communicated with other WhatsApp user so that the information that can be shared in two WhatsApp users will be any type of application. That particular application may be in the wave application mode, may be in peer-to-peer -peer services mode, may be in a streaming video. I can start directly streaming with my cell phone. That is whatever video that I am recording, I am directly streaming that video either over a public network or by utilizing specialized software. The typical example, Facebook Live. Facebook Live, you are streaming the your video by utilizing the Facebook platform so that your streamed video can be accessed whoever are accessing the Facebook. And important, the communication, the transfer bits or information across the network. And that's where we 
are developing the protocols which provides the application developments which provides the communication interface and which provides the translation of the information at endpoints and whenever we are utilizing it we are actually forming a network and whenever a network is formed the obvious quality of service parameters associated with those networks are what is the data rate at what data the information or the application is providing access either access to the data or access to the information or translation of the data with the necessary hardware that is being utilized for the networks then how the information is being transmitted whether what's the traffic pattern whether continuously the bits are sent or whether we are utilizing the bursty type of bit transmission whether that is being bursty type typically in the network meaning a block of bits is being transmitted and a specified control is maintained over that block of bits this for the network design then the important design configuration for the network is what is the traffic target whether it's a multi point whether it's a single destination whether the information is to be provided to the various mobile devices or whether the information is to be provided to the fixed devices depending on that we need to define different parameters for the network then sensitivity typically whenever we are talking about the digital communication the delay in digital communication the jitter in digital communication the addition of the noise at various points in the digital communication and the loss of the data we are utilizing the various configurations associated with the data how that particular data is to be formulated how that data is to be translated how that data needs to be communicated formulated translated communicated that defines the sensitivity of a specified application for the network and how does the application use the network whether it's the client server configuration that is nowadays we call it as a web application how to modulate the sending rate how other applications coexist with the web applications same terminal can be utilized in the peer to peer configuration also or whether the specified application is only peer to peer type of configuration one of the example associated with the peer to peer type of computer you can try if you have two computers at home connect the communication ports or connect those two terminals by utilizing your wireless device so that only these two devices will be connected share the information share the resources which will provide you the idea of who is the commander in the peer to peer type of network then again our main focus is the design of the various protocols for sending the data from one end to the other end for that we are defining the network as nodes plus links then we have previously we were having the telephone connectivity or the telephone network the wired telephone network everyone was having the wired telephone that was a communication network that was available so the first development in the data network was to utilize effectively the existing telephone network the existing telephone network and the various protocols were developed based on the existing telephone network still at the household also we are having if we are having a wired telephone the same wired telephone along with the additional networking devices such as modem or routers we are utilizing 
the same existing telephone network for sending the sending and receiving the data sending and receiving the audio information sending and receiving the video information and that's why a network consists of nodes plus links plus the communication network and the challenges associated with this particular communication network where nowadays we are utilizing the network of network that is internet and that's our main focus see the challenges for the networking we are consider we will be defining the various design parameters required for the networking the scaling the seamless integration of various different application types that is combination or utilize the networks which has varied operating system utilize the network which has different type of topologies one body network will be utilizing star topology one network will be utilizing bus topology one network will be utilizing mesh type of topology but all these networks must be commonly connected and that gave rise to the development of the standards associated with defining the terms for the network so for this whenever we are talking about the different utilizing the different terminologies the device or the data network is known as a node it may be a passive node it may be a active node. the link a communication medium it may be a wired or a wireless it may be utilizing the translation of information with the support of electrical system or the information to be communicated as a electromagnetic system that is typically the light the light or electrical signals are also electromagnetic signals but uh, instead of utilizing the communication link a conductive type of communication link we also can utilize a dielectric type of communication link and that gave rise to the various types of development of the protocols at the link layer and that's why this particular link layer the link layer protocols the link layer issues actually provides what should be the data format and what needs to be the medium access supported for the link and that that's why it's very very important to use the various parameters associated with the link so we will be utilizing this terminology node link physical layer link layer data link layer wired or wireless why wireless networks were developed if within one one network if we want to say for our college environment whenever 20 users with the data terminal 20 users has the data terminals which are having the operating system or which are physically the desktop systems and 40 additional data terminals in the form of your handset or your mobile devices are available it's not at all possible to provide the physical connectivity with all these devices say for uh, physical connectivity for the desktop computers or the laptop computers can be provided but physical connectivity if 150 mobile users are available in the lab who wants to have a connectivity then it's very difficult to provide wires for everybody at the same time the connect providing the connectivity to every terminal to every node or to every host will make the system more and more complicated and that minimizes again the scalability associated with the basic building blocks for the data network so the design issues were solved 
by utilizing a wireless network. The two different configurations, the wired configuration as well as wireless configuration. In a specified room, we can provide a wireless connectivity to almost 256 terminals with the present existing network infrastructure, such as wireless router, wireless router assigning a physical address to all the mobile devices and those mobile devices assigned with a physical and a logical address can communicate with the various other devices. And that's why those are the important design parameters whenever we will go for the procedures, the stacks, the suitability associated with the development of the protocols. Then, typically we have seen the mesh type of topology. In case of mesh type of topology, every terminal is connected with every other terminal. So the reliability of the network is very, very high, but it makes the network more and more complicated. So sharing the network resources is a very important task for a designer who is designing the data network for providing the optimal connectivity to every node. And even if the number of devices grows in the network, all those devices will be accommodated with the support of multiplexing in the data network and that gave rise to the different design associated with the networking devices. Networking devices provides the connectivity, networking devices provides the optimum connectivity to various different data clients or data terminals in the network. The first type of configuration that was utilized was the circuit switching. All the data networking is based on three different switching parameters. The first switching configuration that was supported for the data networking, networking was the circuit switching, where one terminal with the support of switching that is provided by the central system establishes a communication path with the switched network establishes the resources that are being allocated and then exchanges the data. The best example of the circuit switching is our telephone network. The two subscribers that are connected are connected with the circuit switching that is offered by the centralized, we call it as the telephone exchanges. The telephone exchanges provides us the connectivity provides us the connectivity for all the subscribers in a switched manner. And that's the circuit switching. That is exactly the connectivity path. See this particular connectivity path. Connectivity path, the, this terminal can communicate with, suppose this terminal. It has a connectivity path that is being offered like this, that is this terminal, this terminal, this terminal, and then this terminal. It's the circuit, it's the electrical circuit that is first of all being established, which establishes a path. Once a path is established, then the source sends the data, we call it as circuit. The switching parameters, the switching capabilities associated with the telephone exchange. You might have heard 10,000 line telephone exchange. That means 10,000 subscribers are connected to the centralized exchange. That means we can utilize the circuit switch path for 10,000 subscribers, which is publicly available. And that's why the connectivity that is being offered that the first public network connectivity was the word was public network was offered for the telephone networks that are being connected and utilizing that telephone network for sending the data gave rise to the different devices used for data sharing over circuit switching. 
the circuit switch in the typical drawback associated with the circuit switching once the path is being established all the data is transmitted maximum bandwidth will be allocated but that circuit path is not utilized by other terminals in the data network once the data communication in the source and destination with the circuit switching path is established and that's one of the major drawback associated with the circuit switched network this is the circuit switched network multiple subscribers are connected this is actually providing us the circuit switched connectivity the switching is offered by the in between terminal this switching suppose this terminal wants to connect uh, communicate with this terminal then the connectivity will be like this 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 will be connected this forms a path circuit path the actual path and the data will be communicated this is creating the circuit path circuit switch in it because we are not at all utilizing we are the utilizing only the benefits that are supported by the switch network which provides only the connectivity path the connectivity path and then we are sending the data from one node to another node what if this particular path is not available then the network fails and that's where uh, there lies the limitation associated with the circuit switch see the positives as well as the negatives associated with the circuit switched network the circuit switched network we will not at all be discussing the circuit switch network at present we are utilizing this packet switching configuration the packet switching that means the data that needs to be transmitted from one end to another end if the data is quite high is divided into number of packets and those packets propagates through the available switched path from source to destination from source to destination and the all the packets all the packets which are divided into number of sub packets depending on the bandwidth supported by the communication media depending on the path that is being established for translation of the packets from one end to another end actually provides the basic configuration basic protocols design or basic requirements associated with the data that is being switch from one end to another end and that's where we are utilizing the packet switching everywhere the packet the data is divided into number of packets the packets avails the actual propagation path which is the optimum propagation path reaches the destination until and unless all the packets are not received at the destination end the entire packet assembly is not provided and the information is not at all retrieved unless and until all the packets but the advantage is that all the available communication paths all the available communication bandwidth can be utilized for translation of packet from one end to another that means the packet may propagate in any available communication path that's where our start of the design of the protocols what is the protocol what protocol must have protocol must have the necessary packet propagation path the protocol must have the timing associated with the packet that is propagated in the specified communication path and the protocol must have something some procedure for this particular propagation as a data as a data as a digital data and that's where we are designing our various communication protocols i think we will stop for today and in the next lecture we will start with actual the protocols what is the layered architecture what are the standards associated with the protocol i will take the questions please switch on your mic 
can ask any question even in the chat box स्विचिंग बॉक्स एंड जंक बॉक्स आर सेम स्विचिंग बॉक्स एंड junk box uh, junk box are like uh, junction telephone box. yeah yeah uh, the junction box actually provides us a uh, junction box is the part of the switching network whenever uh, okay how your uh, telephone line is being connected your telephone line is being connected with the two different propagation path one uh, is the communication media that is by providing a conductive cable your your telephone okay. is connected by a conductive cable to the telephone exchange and the communication path of this conductive cable is through the various junction boxes which are marked by the telephone exchanges and that actually provides a specified switching path the switching path entirely depends on the number dialed by the subscriber and whenever the number is dialed say line number is dialed then all the switching lines specified to the number 9 are getting connected which is actually providing us a circuit path circuit path for initially 9 number then second number 8 then second number say 6 9 8 or if it's a landline type of number then it's a landline number then inter district connectivity is supported by dialing the specified std code Say zero two four zero for Aurangabad, zero one one for Delhi. The connectivity is offered by the centralized exchange. It's a circuit connection path through the junction boxes. Junction boxes are part of the switch net. Okay. Yeah. What is the difference between peer-to-peer -peer network and client-server network? Okay, peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, every terminal is a intelligent terminal every terminal provides the information as well as requests the information but in case of client server network the client cannot provide the information unless and unless unless and until server permits divesh gaikwad is it okay yes sir again the peer to peer network number of terminals in the peer to peer network can be limited then in case of client server uh, the number of terminals can be quite large the terminals can be connected over distance in case of peer to peer also the terminals can be connected over distance but both the terminals are capable of sharing the information as well as requesting the information that is the major difference in case of client server configuration everything related to the client is defined by the server siddhi no doubt sir sumit no doubt sir saurav Saurabh Gadge, Ashwarya Vakari is not at all properly attending. Gauri Kadam is not properly attending. She is doing some other task. Sujay Thakur is not properly attending. They are on different tabs, but that information is available with us. Murunali. Runali, anything? Any doubt? 
means she is also not properly attending omkar omkar we are not getting your voice Sureka Pawar. No doubt, sir. No doubt, sir. Pooja. No doubt, sir. Siddharth Pati. Sujay Thakkar is not properly attending. सुजय काय चालू आहे तुझं दुसऱ्या टर्मिनल दुसऱ्या टॅब वर काय चालू आहे टक्कर नो टेबल टू रिसीव Make it somewhat interactive. If it, you are not able to communicate, send information in the chat box. Okay, I think we will stop here for today. For one practical batch, we will meet in the afternoon at. I think three forty-five schedule for the practicals. We'll meet for one batch.